All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? The 76th installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast series. Just a little show I do building on the book, you know? Uh, today's topic, we're kicking off on the Sigma male lone wolf character. It's interesting because we have all these avatars, these archetypes now. Uh, it, it, it can't be enough that we have, you know, Alpha versus Beta. Now you've got Sigma, Gamma, Delta, Omega, Frega, Bulia. It just keeps going, right? So the one that pops out the most that I see is guys saying, I'm the lone wolf. I'm the Sigma male. And I find it interesting that we kind of romanticize the notion of disconnecting from society, disconnecting from the norms, going against the grain, which is what I sort of understood this whole, you know, this whole Sigma male thing, uh, you know, potentially was. And I started going down the rabbit hole, which is what I do, right? Went through some Google searches, some YouTube videos. And of course, you know, the TikTok, which just takes you right downhill. Um, so look, l let's start off with this. Because this is cause this is interesting to me tonight. It's a little bit different. What is what is the definition? So there's all these depends on who interprets, you know, like the notion of what a sigma male is. I think a lot of the guys that are more like MGTOW, like going their own way, they're they're kind of like, yeah. I'm like, on the Sigma male, like the ones that are choosing to go their own way. Let's just put it that way. The ones, let's be clear, because there's a there's a part of the uh, demographics out there that aren't choosing that direction. It's kind of like sent for them. But the Sigma male defined is it is a more internally focused sibling to the alpha male, so they're related apparently. While the alpha male quantifies himself on his high position in social hierarchy, the social male, sorry, the Sigma prefers to forego the social hierarchy and need for external validation altogether and pursue internal strength instead. That's interesting. That sounds a lot like me when I was growing up. Essentially a loner or a stray man, although Sigma males have had close circles of friends and loved ones with whom they share deep connections. Sigma male is not socially inept, but simply socially disinterested. Also sounds a lot like how I feel about what's going on with much of the stuff of the world today. I was, you know, I was talking earlier. I'm like, sometimes I just don't feel like I, I actually belong anywhere. You know, like you listen to these, these feeds. I mean, you can go down this rabbit hole of of social media feeds, and it's like, oh, this uh, cross dressing, uh, whatever wants to read stories to like children, or you flip, or keep scrolling, or you flip up, and in Finland they've got some fifty year old dude that wants to identify as a chick and dancing on the ice and can't really skate it's like all of these things i'm sure some of you guys have seen it today it's like i just you know sometimes i just look at the world i'm like i don't belong in this this is, this is not me so i don't know maybe i am a sigma male so let's let's keep going uh disinterested prefers solitary activities where he doesn't have to play social politics he can simply focus on himself the sigma male accepts that he does not need power over others as the alpha male desires, but rather needs only power to control himself and preserve his own autonomy from others. Sigma males are often pragmatic, but may be seen as others aloof, paranoid, secretive, and selfish. What's up, chat? I see uh, a few guys popping in. Jerry, Wayne, Farouk, Ernesto. How you guys doing? Nice to see you all. Guys, do me a solid. If you're watching this somewhere else on the interwebs, I'm just going to copy and paste and just drop it in here on all the chats. So if you're on the Twitter, the Twatches, the Facebooks, the whatevers, head on over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for the algorithms. Thank you kindly. The um, I'm going to do Q&A today, as I always do. I'll drop the link about halfway through the show. A lot of people DM me. How do I, how do I ask a question? Watch the show and hit the join link when I drop it. It's, it's not complicated. Pretty straightforward. All right, so let's take a look at this psychology uh, paper that I came across over here. Uh, we're back in business, see? We fixed it. We fixed it. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry about the interruption, guys. All right, back to where we got before I got raided, right? I got raided. Maybe it was a matrix that attacked. All right, so where did I leave off? 
We're talking about Sigma males, the lone wolf. You guys can see me okay. Camera feed is good. Just let me know in the chat. Chat, everything's good, back to normal. You can hear me though, right? I know you can hear me because I saw the chat saying it was just black screen. Video feed works. Looks like it. It's on my other screen anyway. We'll chalk that up as an L for today. So the thing that kind of bothered me when I was sort of diving into this and looking at it is that I kind of came from an introverted background. Maybe I was a Sigma male, who knows? But everything that you accomplish in life that leads to greatness and these milestones in your life, you can't do it by yourself, okay? Um, the reason why sapiens are so successful as a species is due to gossip. That's That's due to us collaborating and communicating with each other. So as much as you might romanticize the idea of don't bother me, leave me alone, I'm, I'm perfectly fine alone, stay out of my way, um, that can work, but I still think you need a tribe. So I wanted to get into this um, document that I pulled up from a psychologist's uh, site, and he breaks down characteristics and traits of, sorry, he calls these a 17 traits of Sigma males. Uh, one, independent. So Sigma males are direct. They rely on themselves. Company is okay, but they don't need it too much. They may have a couple of close friends, but they don't need a large social circle and are content with their own company and don't like wasting time. Okay, so I, actually, I agree with a lot of that, to be honest with you. Two, elusive. Um, the words mysterious, elusive, hard to reach, often used to describe a Sigma male. Uh, it's not that they're particularly secretive. It's just that they don't engage in banalities. And they don't like to overshare their life. Okay. Kind of like that too. Rich, why don't you share this? Why don't you share that? Because the internet's freaking weird, dude. And I don't want people knowing about my life in detail. Maybe I am elusive. Maybe help oh, hang on. This might be the title of the next book. Instead of the unplugged alpha, it might be the unplugged sofa. Where are we getting here? Off the grid. Because of their character traits, Sigma males are less likely to be on the web. They re oh, that's not me for sure. <laughs> I'm all over the goddamn web. They recognize its benefits, but rarely see the need to engage social media all the time. They see the media as helpful tools to connect, but also understand it can drain time. Deep thinkers. Ponder the deep questions in life. Uh, they wonder why we are here, the purpose of life. I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> How to live a good life, definitely. Because of their depth, they often reject much of what society says and does. Yes, I agree with that. The test shallowness. Sigma males test superficial superficiality and shallowness. That's usually why they dislike groups and small talk and why they keep themselves, keep themselves to themselves. They take life too far too seriously to engage in life's trivialities. Hmm. Sounds like a peaceful life. Charismatic. Because of their elusiveness, quietness, and independence, many people find them quite charismatic. Sigmas are silently confident, and that has power, but they are dark horses and lack their desire for social approval makes them stand out. Dominant? Differently. So it says differently dominant. Alphas dominate through their loud behavior, hostility, showing off. I don't know that alphas are hostile. That's an uh, exaggeration. Sigmas dominate differently. They get what they want without others noticing. Mm, okay. Now let's get interesting. They can be excellent at networking as people respect what they say. Brooding is the next one. Some say sigmas are brooding. They are undoubtedly quiet and rarely speak unnecessarily. Their moods are often darker. And it's not that they are not happy or optimistic. They are just not superficial. They favor practicality over positivity. Definitely introverted traits. You guys don't know this if you're newer to the channel, but I was quite introverted growing up. Like, you know, the existence in my high school years very small group of friends listening to a lot of uh rock heavy metal you know long hair headbanger sort of dude went to concerts with a very close uh select group of friends i get it like i get like i think i'm 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 getting what the sigma male archetype is sort of about uh they use critical thinking as the next category um they think critically about what others tell them and whether it is formed sorry from teachers parents or co-workers and even stuff that they read on the web, they recognize critical thinking skills are crucial to getting by in the world. I Like, I would agree with that. Like, common sense is just not common anymore. People are pretty stupid nowadays, and they just, you know, like, what what was it? Three quarters of the population that just, oh, yeah, just give me that, give me that juicy jab, you know, the untested uh, experimental thing. Number 10, embrace ambiguity. Sigma males are happy. That's kind of like amuse mastery, right? 
happy happy with uncertainty they don't need the world to be black and white they recognize this applies to many spheres including what is real and what is right they still have preferences like anyone else but don't hold on to them too tightly no slave to fashion sigma males don't care too much about what is fashionable they are far too independent and practical to care well if they don't care about what other people think why would they care about fashion right they like to look good and they embrace their style but pay no mind to what is popular they don't fit in sigma males rarely find themselves as part of groups they can take part in them if it suits their needs, but they will never be a full-time member. Something about the dependence of a click puts them off. Introverted, definitely. Ad adaptable. Sigma males adapt to different circumstances because they reject. See, this is where this is where you're gonna run into some problems with some of the guys that think that they're the, like the lone wolf sort of character, but they're not adapting to situations. Because I see I see a lot of guys say, well, I'm just gonna go over here and do my own thing and mind my own business and go my own. My go my own way sort of thing, but they're not adapting to the current circumstances in their environment. So Sigma males can adapt to different circumstances because they reject much of what society says everyone should do. They often don't follow the same path as everyone else, yet Sigmas don't like to stand out and attract attention to themselves, so they learn to adjust and blend in. Hmm. Dislike rules, okay? I'm all about a little more freedom in life. Not uh, anarchists, but they do obey the rules and where the rules are not transparent, the rules seem trivial and pointless and nobody's getting harmed. They may choose, they may choose to sidestep them. I always say it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. So that's kind of a line with the number 14 dislike rules. Constraints is the next one. Sigmas detest that when others try to control them and why others often see them as rebels. Many see society's rules as a subtle form of control and so choose not to follow blindly. Thus, Sigma celebrate freedom and fight things that hold them back. That's counterintuitive because if you're going your own way, going like I'm over here, leave me alone, fighting things that hold you back, I don't know. Travel lightly, Sigmas are not impressed with material wealth. While the Alpha may be striving for money and status to show off their power, the Sigma male is content with what he has. See, this is like, I've often asked people, would you rather be... Um, rich and anonymous or famous and poor or rich and famous and if you're to pick out of one of those here let's you know what let's do a quick poll let's do this as a poll let's see what you guys in the chat are saying uh because i think the polls still work here yeah i'm logged in so how do we do a poll poll come on start a q a start a poll there we go so would you rather let's go with uh, rich and a non rich and famous there's no point in saying famous and poor because if you have the choice of being rich and a non you're of course going to pick that so let's just pose those two questions it's in the live chat Roy says rich and sexy. Yeah, I pick rich and sexy too. All right, let's go back to this article. You guys you guys can click on that poll. I'll take a look at it in a second. They travel lightly, not impressed with material wealth, okay? Prefers his wit, intellect, and is cunning to any material possessions. They have no plans is the next one. Sigma finds it hard to dedicate themselves to one thing for any length of time. They have many things of interest to them and can be involved in different activities. Often they are very exciting life, but not single-minded. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I don't... Look, man, life requires planning. Like there's like there's some things that I deviate here from. Like you need a tribe, right? Like you, the way of men is the way of the gang, as Jack Donovan would, would uh, say, right? So like, like the like the almost full disconnect, it's more of a disconnect than I think is useful to you as a guy. I mean, I'll put it to you this way. I don't think the unplugged alpha would disconnect from a network of men. I mean, part of the, I mean, one of the reasons why I have my networks of men is so that when things come up, things that need a sounding board, uh, feedback, I need help with something, I can go there and they can co and they can go to the other members in the group too. It's why I created this thing, right? Anyway, I have no plans. Okay. So those are the main points. Um, it seems like, like the flaws that I'm seeing is when like the full, like the full on disconnection a little bit too much can't be good for any situations there. Should I even bother showing these videos? I don't even think I'm going to show you these videos because 
there's like the the most absurd YouTube videos that I came up with. One of them w went like super viral, got millions of views, and then people started making fun of it because it's this like uh, Mano Swamp Dork that's like trying to compare. Like the title of it, you can go look it up. The title of the video is Why Sigma Males Are More Attractive Than Alpha Males. And it's basically a guy that's overweight trying to rationalize and justify um, why he thinks he's better looking than other people and he doesn't connect himself to society or doesn't have any friends, essentially. But the funny thing is, is right at the start, when you look at it, uh, what does it say over here? It says Sigma Nation Presents, and it's got like a lion, or sorry, a tiger and a wolf. Implying there's a tribe, which is just funny because the whole the whole notion is disconnecting from people. Here, let's do this. Let's have some fun with some TikToks, and then we'll take some some call ins and uh, chop it up tonight. Hopefully, the I don't know if that's a computer issue or an internet issue, but hopefully things don't freeze up again. I don't know. I've done probably over three hundred podcast episodes live now. This is the first time I've ever had to reboot a computer so you know shit sometimes happens uh super chat here says rich your book has helped me a lot when i navigate my divorce striving for success now my main focus thanks for everything took me out of the dark hole i was in for a bit by the way guys um below pinned in the comment um it's not on live right now but if you're listening to the replay you can just go to my website and, or um yeah, you, you can probably go to the website, but probably the best place to do is just on the channel uh, description and you'll find it there. I have a course that I uploaded on a teachable on divorce. And if you're in the early stages of either planning or going through it, but you still live in the matrimonial home, there's loads of useful information in the Unplugged Alpha's Guide to Divorce. Um, so the book's good. It's got it's got a decent chapter, probably two chapters of useful information that help you sort of, you know, square away your head. But if you've got kids and you and you're going to be going through something that's an acrimonious divorce, get the uh, course. And if you use the coupon code half off, so H A L F O F F, um, I think there's maybe about a dozen coupon codes left because I think I set like something like thirty or, or forty of them. A lot of them have been used up anyway, so. Use that coupon code, you'll get 50% off at checkout. So it'll cost you like 250 or something like that. And there's a community and I do monthly Zooms as well to answer Q&As Q too. So thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Um, so let's do some of these TikToks because I find these things hilarious. So let's pop, plop these up on the screen and then we'll do some Q&A from you guys. Because the way that the internet sort of romanticizes or and defines the, this, this avatar, again, the flaw that I see is that is a dis, is a disconnect from a network, a tribe, a gang of men. Again, the way of men is a is a way of the gang, and it's fine to be a alpha alpha archetype, the strength, the you know, the successful, the competent, the smart, the problem solver, all that sort of stuff. But if you don't have a tribe of men that you can rely on, I, I really think you're missing out. Um, get TikTok for desktop. Why does it want me to put it on the desktop? I'm not doing that. Piss off. Well, freaking the, the Chinese communists want to put more crap on my computer to monitor what I'm doing. No, we're going to browser base this. All right. Present share screen. Um, Chrome tab, share audio. There we go. All right. So we've got these sorted by popularity. Um, let's see what we're getting here. How to become a Sigma male. 2.5 million. Okay, here's one with 7.7. .7. So, signs you might be a Sigma male. So, we'll see what we get here from this fellow. signs that you might be a Sigma male. They are known as the rarest males on Earth, which makes them irresistible to women. We used to think that there was only... Okay, so, that's one of the talking points that I've heard, too, as well, is that they are the rarest form of man on Earth, which makes them irresistible to women. And I'm not buying it, because... While it's clear that they exist, women like competent men that have that have influence, right? Like one of the things that women like are socially influential guys. And if you're a hermit, you can't demonstrate that. So I don't buy uh, Captain Yellow Glasses here with the uh, story that they're rare and the most attractive to women. So let's keep going and see what else he says. 
back out of a tiny bit. Which makes them irresistible to women. We used to think that there was only alpha and beta, where alphas are at the top and then betas are at the bottom. But sigmas are almost like a cheat code. They are at top with the alphas, but they are outside of the hierarchy. One no of the friends. biggest signs that you're a sigma is that you love being alone, but you still value others. Sigmas are never more comfortable than when they are alone. They might be viewed as introverted. And you also value people close to you, but it might be difficult to establish relationships. Another sign you're a sigma is if you treat everybody the same. Sigmas reject the idea that you need to treat one person one way and other people another way. Okay, I, I don't know where this kid came up with that because that wasn't in the article that I just read from the psychologist. So that that doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, that's, that's TikTok for you, right? That's bro science right there. And this could make others dislike you. The last sign is that sigmas are silent. They don't really talk about the little things in their lives, which makes women naturally find you mysterious and attractive. Here's okay, well, some signs that look, you I mean, mystery is definitely attractive. There's no question about that. Uh, so they keep using Christian Bale here as the original Sigma male. Like, what is what is this all about? How to become a Sigma? Okay, there's no talking, so I'm just going to mute the, the sound so I don't have any issue with YouTube. Just a dude walking around as Christian Bale. Now... This is this is Peaky Blinders over here. I don't know if you guys have seen the series. Really, really good. Um, he's definitely not a Sigma because he has his... I mean, he's basically the leader of a gang. So why would they use the image, the imagery here to define what a Sigma... You know, like, like, it's weird. Like, they suck in these notions and ideas that don't, that don't make a lot of sense with the avatar itself. Joker, definitely an outcast for sure. And now the thing's freezing up and not playing, of course. Anyway, let's come back to that in a second. Yeah, a lot, a lot of so apparently this this like lip movement here is is Sigma male stuff. What else we got here? Personality traits. I don't know. So I asked um I asked on Twitter. Define a, a known Sigma male. Where, where's the post I did here? Let me grab it here. So who is an iconic Sigma, Sigma male that I would know? So here we got. Tune in to learn exactly what a Sigma male is. MGTOW actually high value being sent his own. Who are actually high value versus. Yeah. Okay. I would agree with that. So this guy, Lee, basically is, is saying a. A Sigma is a guy who's basically going his own way, but he's chosen that path instead of being sent his own way. Sent are the guys that um, want to get something out of society, women, you know, more specifically. Um, when you're when you've actually chosen a path of um, more like a little bit more solitude, I, I I guess, then I would definitely you know, connect with that based on what I've come across. Bruce Wayne is a Sigma male. Is he though? Is he though? Because he definitely had a network, even though he worked alone, he still had a network, right? He had his butler. He, you know, definitely collaborated with quite a few people. I mean, you know, if you're going to use that comic book character and even the movies. So I don't know. Matthew McConaughey. Is he though? Or is he just an alpha that's, you know, quiet and, you know, like he's got a good network, right? So somebody put, <laughs> here, I'm going to put these up on the screen so you can see some of these. Um, share screen. This guy over here is a Sigma male. No, just kidding. Obviously, uh, me in due time, John Wick. Yeah, okay. So John Wick, um, probably yes, although... If you've watched the films, he's, of course, got a network of people that he relies on. So not entirely completely independent, but definitely not, you know, like the Power Ranger gang. You, you know, if you know what I'm saying. Paul Newman, I, um, I'm i a little too, you know, some people look at me and go, oh, you're, t you're old, Rich. I'm actually a little bit too young to remember very many of Paul Newman's movies. But from what I remember, he was a good, uh, good actor. Keanu, now, 
we got John Wick up here, but then we got Keanu Reeves down over here. So we're talking about the person, the actor. And I happen to like Keanu Reeves. He has a very nice uh, motorcycle company, hand-built bikes. Um, what are they called? Somebody will put it in the uh, chat. But I was I was watching a, a build show once on YouTube where they kind of like dove into this workshop. He's got a very good network. He's very well connected. He's a nice guy. And um, he definitely gets stuff done. Great actor too. Um, you know, he's acting a lot of a lot of different stuff. But I wouldn't call him a Sigma because he's got because he's got a great network, right? Like you know, it's it's clear that these guys are not lone wolves going their own way. Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay, you might have me. I think you might be right. Who knows? Could be a a group of of people. We still don't know. Bruce Willis. Mm, Brad Pitt. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> this guy. Uh, yeah, we'll give it to Ryan. Sure. Uh, nobody knows any of them because they're lone wolves. They don't talk or deal with anyone. They're on their own path. Well, you know, by that case, our friend Ryan, you know, collaborates with quite a few people. So maybe he's not. Um, both. Uh, what kind of roles? Okay. Batman, Ernest Hemingway, Steve McQueen, Will Chamberlain. Mushaki, Steve McQueen. Steven Seeger, Cobra Tate, definitely not Andrew Tate. He's he's like, if you know anything about Andrew, he's got a lot of friends, right? He's got a network, you know, like I've got my community. Andrew's got his community, he calls his the war room, whatever. So, you know, if you've got a tribe, if you've got a gang that you, that you roll with, you know, sort of thing, then that would disqualify you from that definition. They don't exist. See, that's the that's the common notion that gets that does get pushed around, you know, quite a bit. It's just a made up term for alphas without friends, you know, is what I've heard. Uh, Henry Cavill, yeah, perhaps, perhaps Sean Connery didn't know him well enough outside of the films, but I saw a few interviews with Sean Connery. Um, I don't know, Genghis Khan. Sorry, is that Genghis or Genesis Khan? Muhammad, Julius Caesar, Hannibal, Teddy Roosevelt, Alexander the Great. How would you know if Alexander the Great was a Sigma? Now, he rolled with a big-ass army, so he had a tribe. He had a gang, so no, definitely not. John F. Kennedy, President of the United States? No. <laughs> he had an entire cabinet of people that were rolling with him. David Goggins, maybe. He's like One of the things I learned about Goggins is that he doesn't really like to do uh, podcasts. He doesn't like to do interviews. He's very, very selective uh, about putting, you know, putting himself out there. Um, so perhaps yes, but he does have a powerful network of friends. I mean, you know, he's friends with guys like Joe Rogan, right? Mel Gibson, Keanu Reeves, Bill Mayer. Do you realize alpha male is de debunked in Wolf World? Male and female co-dominate pack. Um, this guy's not too bright. He's probably one of those people that watch that. Um, who's that fat guy? He's a comedian. You try to debunk, debunk the alpha male. Terrence Mannon, Don Draper, James Bond. James Bond, but no. No. I mean, he operated by himself, but he had a, I mean, he had Q. He had the entire tribe that would build all of his cool gadgets and shit. Um, he, in most of the films, would collaborate with at least a, a few other people. Um, very rarely operating always by himself, but close, yeah. For sure. Data not found. Will Smith definitely. Will Smith's just a beta. He's just a. He's just a nerd. He's just not. He's just not there. I don't know if his career is ever going to come back after that slap. Jordan Peterson. If Sigma and Alpha qualities were met in the middle. Look, I. Whenever I talk about Jordan Peterson, or I or I hear that name, it's like. Mm, because he does a lot of good, you know, and he's definitely not. Does he? Okay, so let's so let's do this. Does he operate independently? No, he's always collaborating with people, doing podcasts. He signed up for the Daily Water Wire. I don't know what they paid him, but if it's close to Stephen Crowder's deal, quite a bit of money probably. He's well off. I wouldn't call him a sigma. Would I call him an alpha male? Some some guys clearly might. Not by my standards. I mean, uh, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the chat. 
I like the guy. Look, I like the guy. It's just some of the stuff that he said and done. Just it's like, eh. like is I did a three part. No, sorry, not a three part series, but there was a three part series that was on uh, Daily Wire Plus. I'm subscribed to that. I went there to go watch it, and I did a breakdown on an Unplugged Alpha podcast series and his advice on marriage. Horrible. You can go watch that. Just it's about a it's about a month back. Just go for a search on uh, the Unplugged Alpha and then Jordan Peterson plus marriage, and you'll. You'll find it. Personally, I group them into singles, alphas, sigma betas. Cliff High. He'll know. He'll know what you're looking for. Who's this guy? Uh, never heard of him. Bryant. This guy is a total nerd. I would not give him any credit at all. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Absolutely not. Why? How? How could Elon Musk be a sigma male? He started by building. Um, I mean, I mean, his breakout was PayPal, which, you know, he did with like the Silicon Valley crowd, obviously. Um, every single business he's run has not been a company of one. It's been large companies with lots of people. Um, you know, you look at SpaceX, how many fucking people are employed there? Engineers, rocket scientists, blah, blah, blah. You know, Tesla, solar panels, boring company, digging giant holes, you know, massive holes in the earth. Um, pretty much every company he's run is not a company of one, not a Sigma male whatsoever. No leader of leader of a large gang, huge tribe. And the people that follow him outside of that, that are customers. Like if there's one thing that you'll notice about like people that buy Musk's products, which is mostly Tesla is they, they are rabid fans of the product. Like they absolutely love it. All right. So he's, so he's built that part of his network too. Uh, Sigma male sounds like a cope, but I would say Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, okay. Sigma males are a poor man's alpha. That's interesting. They don't really exist, but act as a cope addition to the social sexual hierarchy. Hmm. Bobby Fisher. Introvert. Yeah. That's what we kind of arrived at earlier is that it's an introverted alpha to some degree. Jack Donovan. Nope. I know Jack. He's got a tribe of men. Uh, you know, he's got his own gang. So um, I don't think he would call himself a Sigma at all. It's basically introverted alpha. Now this is popping up again. Yeah, a lot of people didn't, didn't even know what it was. So, you know, it seems like a new sort of, I mean, it's not new, it's kind of newish, but I think there's, there's varying degrees of truth here because you got people that are like, it's a cope. It's just maybe a guy that's strong, but with no friends, or maybe somebody that could be socially awkward that has difficulty, somebody that might be choosing to go their own way. I think that one of the, one of the underlying, like one of the fundamental problems that I have with the notion of romanticizing the idea of a Sigma male is that you don't have a tribe of men to rely on. And I made this mistake myself personally, when I was younger, I was a lot more introverted. I probably had two or three very close friends um, I didn't travel in large groups, you know, whenever I did stuff, it was always a small, very small, uh, tight knit group. Um, never really liked loud places and parties and stuff like that. But as I got older and especially as I started to, you know, dip my toes into running my own business, when I left the corporate world, it became very obvious to me, especially when I joined EO and I started to network with other entrepreneurs, like every, Every guy that does something of any significance or any importance in his life that's that's going to resonate, that's going to send ripples out there, it's going to put a little dent in the universe. They have a tribe. They have a gang for sure, 100%. So you're missing out on that aspect, which is fine if that's, you know, if you're okay with that, if you just want to, like, I get it. There's there there's guys out there. Um, what was that special on Netflix? I, th I think it was called Life Below Zero. And I can't remember the guy's name, Vilniv something. I can't remember his first name, but I'm pretty sure his last name was Vilniv. But he basically lived in Alaska in this wooden cabin on a lake year round and um, all by himself. You know, he would he would hunt moose, uh, you know, process it, put it up in his uh, storage freezer sort of thing, which is really just an open air ladder that animals couldn't, couldn't climb up. Um, and his story is told like there's a really good interview with this guy on Joe Rogan's podcast. Uh, I wish I could remember his first name, but I'm pretty sure his last name was Vilnov and it's life below zero. So if you go and search for Joe Rogan, life below zero Vilnov, you'll probably find it. Uh, but that would, to me, 
um, exemplify a Sigma male. It's interesting because he mentioned in his interview, one of the reasons why he did the other seasons of the show was because he had so much popularity. He figured he could use it to leverage it to find himself a wife. So he used the show and some girl showed up and wanted to, you know, get married to him and have his children. And, you know, there he is. He's living there to this day, um, apparently up in um, Alaska still. But he splits time from, uh, I think it's Anchorage and then this little cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere. It's literally like miles from nowhere. That to me would be Sigma male sort of ter territory. It's like, I'm out. Just leave me alone. I'm going to go over here. I got, you know, I got my dog. I got my hunting rifle. I got everything I need. I got my cabin in the woods. Don't need anything else. Precisely. Yeah. Samurai as well, too. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that for sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting to sort of dive into that thought process because so many people have mentioned this lone wolf and this and that. It's like it sounds cool, but if you don't have influence and if you don't have a network, what do you do when shit hits the fan? What do you like? You got to like, you got to rely on yourself. I like that. I have guys in my life that I can be like, yo name. I need this fixed. You know, you got a contact for that. Let's sort of thing. Um, I like that. And I think I hear it here. I shared this the other day because I put it in my, my feed. Let me see if I can find it. Where's my phone actually? There it is. I'll just read it because I just did a screenshot of it. But one of the guys in my group sent me this uh, message because he just came back from working with another guy in my group. And he said, just wanted to say what an amazing network you've built, man. So this is the power of a network, right? Like this is a power of building a tribe, a gang, whatever it is that you want to call it. Again, you know, with Jack Donovan's writing, he calls it the way of men is the way of the gang. And you have to sort of test each other, hold each other accountable by surrounding yourself with strong, like-minded men. He goes, uh, what an amazing network you've built. I got picked up from the airport in a McLaren, spent the weekend at a billionaire's ranch. Uh, things I noticed about billionaires, he, he goes on, he says, they don't take selfies. They don't talk about money. They wear jeans and flannel t-shirts. My, my neighbor drives a better SUV. They don't brag. Nothing in their house is flash. They make, sorry, they make the rules. They don't use social media. They don't throw parties or yachts to post pictures. Sorry, they don't throw parties on yachts only to post pictures. Big distinction there. And they're not dripping in hot chicks because they're busy doing other things, right? Women are just a compliment. But that's that's the places that you could possibly go, right? When you've got a strong network of people around you, when you surround yourself with greatness, when you choose to put yourself in better rooms. I always say, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room, move to the next room. That's what I don't like about the lone wolf thing. It's like, don't romanticize that because humans are social animals. And for you to get what you want out of life, you're, you're only going to go so far trying to do it yourself. Like even me, when I define my company of one, because it's, it's really just me, I have a contractor and maybe one other person that does some work for me from time to time, but I don't have any employees. I don't have an office space. There's no bricks and mortars. You know, sometimes my office is in my car with just a go, where's my GoPro with just this thing over here strapped to my windshield, right? Sometimes that's my office, right? So yeah, I, I am I am in, in some ways in regards a company of one and somewhat of a loner in that sense. But I've structured my life in, in such a way that I don't want to complicate it unnecessarily with things like employees, sick days, benefits, source deductions. Oh, I can't make it in today because my cat sprained his eye looking at the disco ball and I have a vet bill to pay. Blah, 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 sort of thing. I just don't deal with that. But I have the network around me to support other areas of my life, right? So... I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit of a hybrid. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? We'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, let's stop the screen on this. Close that. Get rid of the TikToks. Sigma Male Nation presents on the Mano Swamp. Glenn Villeneuve. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely go and look at that. Like, If you want to have an interesting listen to a podcast, find the Joe Ro Rogan episode with Glenn Villeneuve. It's just unbelievable. It's It's like... And even the series itself, like if you want to romanticize and see what a real Sigma male is, go watch Glenn Villeneuve on uh, Life Below Zero. It's on Netflix. Or just watch the podcast interview that he did with Joe Rogan. That's that's a Sigma male by definition. But you need medical attention. What do you do, man? You're going to be, you know, you cut yourself. You're going to be stitching yourself up and pulling on the string like this. And, you know, Joe, Ram Joe Ramboing that, uh, you know, thing together. 
it's it's one way to live but life in my estimation is better when you have a tribe of, of strong men around you um do like having a tribe a group around here uh Jaron's in a chat. Life's a lot easier when you have a solid network of guys who have your back. I lucked out with the fact that my siblings are super solid and have always had a tight bond. Yeah, that's like my brothers too. Like me and my bros, like my like my blood brothers, because I've got two of them. We're just like it's nice having that. Uh, knowing you are a bit, you are a hybrid man. Maybe I am a hybrid, perhaps. I gotta have my tribe though, man. I can't do the, you know, I can't do the leave me alone and I'm just going to go in the woods thing. You're either alpha or beta. There's no in between. Okay. All right. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to grab the join link and we'll move to some Q and a, hopefully the <laughs> stream here doesn't crap out of you again. Uh, join in and ask a Q. I'll drop the link there. So again, if you guys are watching this somewhere on the interwebs, um, head on over to YouTube and uh, the links there. I just dropped it. Uh, oh, let's see what the results are of the survey that I dropped. People would rather be rich and anonymous. That would be my choice too. Uh, so 84% said rich and anonymous, 16% said rich and famous. And you know, the influence and like the reach and the social recognition is Look, I'm by no means uh, famous by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a part of me that would rather just get this done on the internet and just be private in my own life, which is not possible with YouTube. But people will come up to you and they'll be like, hey, you know, I watch your stuff, blah, 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 sort of stuff. And okay. Um, but, the, but there's a contingent, like there's that part of me, maybe it's that Sigma, you know, part of me that would rather just, you know, get the message out, have the conversations, do the podcast sort of thing, but then be invisible when you travel around afterwards. Not possible. But Rich and Anon seems to be the choice of the viewers tonight. So thanks for that. I'll end that poll. And let's pin that uh, link for StreamYard up at the top. Pin message. And before we start doing the Q&A, uh, I'm just going to run the ad reel and we'll come back and start doing some uh, questions. Guys. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep to your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. And we're back. Welcome back. Um, hey guys, quick question for you. How do you like this shirt? In the comments, let me know. I've got a sponsor uh, that wants to deal with me on clothing. And um, I normally get my shirts tailored. Um, they, I go to this place, they measure you up, you know, arm length, chest, waist, all that sort of stuff. You, you can pick how you want to embroider, you know, your, uh, your shirt, and your, uh, your collars and everything like that. And it's about the same price, but instead of having to go somewhere and they measure you up, you just kind of punch in like a bit of a survey and they, they spit out a shirt that actually fits you. Like this is the one that they sent me to try out sort of as a trial. 
So you tell me, does this look as good as the other ones that I've been wearing in the past? Because this one's from a computer AI and it's about the same price. You don't have to go anywhere. So let me know what you guys think. Um, as far as the fit goes anyway. Somebody was asking about a supercar here in a super chat. Thinking of getting my first supercar to find my tribe. Any recommendations? Yes. Um, I would get the best supercar that you can that gets you in the door, if that makes sense. So if you're if you're looking to roll, like um, the club that I roll with here in Toronto, um, his requirement is has to be a mid-engine supercar or... It has to be a, a German product like AMG, Audi RS, or BMW M. So if I didn't have a lot of money and I wanted to get into a better room and find a cool tribe to hang out with and network with, the cheapest car you can probably buy is probably like a Porsche Boxster or maybe a Cayman. Um, one of the guys drives a Cayman that's in the club. He's got it kind of like tuned up and stuff, but it's a regular Cayman. You can probably pick those up for both. 40, 50 grand or something like that. So, and he's rolling with guys with half a million dollar, like, you know, Lambos and McLarens and stuff like that, if you know what I'm saying. So that's just my advice there. Um, let's do this here. So we got guys in the private chat, uh, career related question, alpha beta question. Let's do the alpha beta question. Where's Yeagle? Yeagle. There you are. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good. What do you got for me tonight? We actually two here and we have two questions. My okay. friend here wanting to know if it's possible to be alpha man with one woman and a beta, beta man with another woman. Absolutely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So picture this. I mean, I did this uh, cast maybe about a year ago. I think I'm going to revisit it again soon. Um, but you've got, so just draw like a big cross on your screen. On the left-hand side, you've got your alphas. And on the right hand side, you got betas. On the top, you've got unplugged, and on the bottom, you've got plugged in. So you can have a unplugged alpha, you can have a plugged in alpha, you can have an unplugged beta, you can have a plugged in beta. You see what I'm saying? So you yeah. can move around in those quadrants, right? Like in one relationship, you could be a total beta, and then you know, your life changes. Maybe you improve your social standing, you make more money, you get rid of belly fat move to a new town sort of thing. And now all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm not, I don't want to deal with that old version of myself. This is, this is who I am now. So yeah, you can move from one quadrant to another for sure. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and the second question I had is uh, personal. I wanted your opinion on what should I do money wise. I'll give you a little background. I'm uh, mm -hmm. 24 soon and I'm looking at getting like 50 to 70 K in our uh, coin from a, a restitution lawsuit and I'm wondering what mm -hmm. to do with it because I currently have a job. I have like 10K savings, 70K investings, which are not liquid. And I want, uh, you know, to be a millionaire, to be rich, to be an entrepreneur. Where do you live? Israel. And it's 70K? Uh, I don't know yet because the, the lawsuit is still ongoing, but it, I guess it, it will be at least like 50. And the question is, what should I do with it? Yeah. Depends. I want to invest it uh, in something smart, you know. You want to invest it in something smart. Not like invest in building a, a business or investment, not, not like blow it up on some car or motorcycle or something. Yeah, okay. So, well, it sounds like you got most of your money sorted anyway and you're, and you're pretty young. So, at the end of the day, worst case scenario is wh wherever you put it, you screw up, it's gone. Poof. Worst case scenario. I'm back to where Best I'm case now. scenario, you turn into something a lot more than that. Yeah, that's the goal. Now, the cool thing about money is that money can make money, right? Mm -hmm. So my favorite way to go about multiplying money is either entrepreneurship or and or investing into certain things that will make me money later on down the road. Like if you can wait, if you can wait, you know, till 2030, I'm pretty sure you're going to see a six, maybe seven figure Bitcoin, right? So I, I'd probably put like 10, 20 grand into Bitcoin, maybe slash. I already Ethereum, put a little bit, Bitcoin. like 10. I already put it. Yeah. yeah. But why not start a business? Like, do you have any skills? Is, is there anything that you can I'm working invest on in the yourself? Skill. I'm working on the skill part. I'm actually joined the real world with Tate. I'm working on uh, copywriting, but I, uh, I don't know. Copyright. If you're, you're so 
Yeah, so let me just tell you something about copywriting. I get about two dozen emails every day from guys like you trying to sell mm -hmm. me copywriting courses or copywriting help. Let me send mm -hmm. it over your way. I got this new thing. Let me send you this video. I got this new thing. I know where it's all coming from, but I just block them all. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't need anybody like I'm not trying to be rude here, but I don't need a 24 year old kid or an 18 year old kid offering me copywriting services. And my entire inbox is filled with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not standing out like you're not you're not going to make serious money trying to find copywriting gigs. Right. You got to so do something you, more than that. OK, so what it, it's you do it's that? a good starting place. Like, you know, learn the skill of 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 persuasion, which is what copywriting is. Um, if you really want to learn about copywriting, read Joe Sugarman's books. I don't know if you can still get them off of Amazon. You might be able to get used copies. But Joe Sugarman wrote some great books on, on copywriting. He was the OG. Right. Yeah. But I mean, now you can push some buttons and AI will take care of copywriting. Yeah, I know. I don't know if I will stick to, uh, with it because I don't know how much I will like it. But what would you do with that amount of money to invest it in a business? Because you said you're kind of a bootstrapper. You shouldn't have to put a lot of money. Well, technically, in yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't really need to blow through 70 grand of, of, of money to get a business off the ground. Depending on the business that you choose, you probably wouldn't. You know, it would be a better use of your time and money buying yeah. the School of Entrepreneurship course. It's, yeah, it's less I want than to $2, do thousand dollars. I want to do it as soon as I have the enough money for it. I didn't enroll until now because I didn't have enough. Well, it's it's going to open up again in the spring. So here, like the best thing for you guys to do is to just be on my email list. Uh, so in the ticker below, entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags for the, those of you listening, not watching. Get on the email list and you'll be notified when the course opens up for enrollment. That okay. breaks down what all the best entrepreneurs do to build a business that is easy, fun, and lucrative. Because most people, when they build a business, they come up with some idea because they've seen somebody else do it, like copywriting or moving some physical product or Amazon FBA or something like that. There, There's literally like millions and millions of copies of, of people out there doing stuff like that. And it's very competitive. The margins are very low. If you're moving physical products, it sucks. Things break. They get lost in the mail. People lie. Got stolen. I never. It never arrived. Right? They subscribe, and then they forget they subscribe, and then they cancel, and then they get pissed off because the shipment still comes. Like, you run into a lot of problems if you pick the wrong kind of business. You see what I'm saying? So the whole yeah. reason why I put the course together is like, look, you guys keep asking me about business. What kind of business sh should I start? You've got seventy grand coming. Spend nineteen ninety seven and, and buy the School of Entrepreneurship course. You Definitely. will get all the answers that you need from there. Definitely, will do it. Actually, Richard, you're I wanted investing to get in yourself. Yeah, obviously, I wanted to do it. I will do it. Um, Gary's right there. I want. I wanted to, to tell you one more thing. It's not a question, but I, I thought it's something you would find find funny. Um, no. I stumbled upon a post on Facebook here in Israel of a thirty year old woman who does workshops for men, either single men or in a relationship. And uh, one main part in the workshop is she undresses the lower half and shows them her private parts to educate them on female pleasure. And I just thought it was so, so horrible. It's so funny. I wanted to get your take on it. So, so that was an ad running on Facebook? Not an ad, like a personal share, which went viral. Oh, obviously. share. Yeah. which probably went viral so it got shared by a lot of people yeah it was it was hilarious she <laughs> said she's got comments like uh, i finally understand i never had the courage to look directly at it i miss my girlfriends v you know comments like that Look, man this like you know as far as any comments that i got on it this just this is a very good example of the state of men today like where we are at this point and the state now, of women and the state of women. and women too because this is what women think that they should be doing but but men allow it. Like, let's be honest. Men allow it. Yeah. And I thought about what would happen if the uh, the, the roles were reversed. The Can men would probably be in jail by offering it. Could you imagine? Exactly. Yeah. So there you have it, my friend. Anyway. Thanks, Rich. Have fun, man. Have a great evening. Thanks. Take care. Uh, all right. Let's see who we got here in the chat. Alpha beta question. We did that one. Career money one uh content creation on youtube all right let's do this content creation on youtube matt how you doing buddy doing good how are you good what do you got for me tonight 
All right. So uh, I'm 22 years old, uh, college grad. I've taken your course um, of on entrepreneurship. And I was wondering about um, one of the ways you talk about making money is through content on the internet, something that's location independent, right? Yeah. So obviously this is what we're I'm, doing right now, by the way. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but realistically, obviously, I can't offer anything to the manosphere. Um, that's not a place where I would find much success at all, I imagine. I was thinking about doing political commentary. Do mm. you think that would be a good place to start for content creation for somebody who's on the younger side? Yes, I do. Because there's a lot of young guys that talk about politics. Mm. And I don't think a lot of young people are well versed in politics. So if you're articulate, and you have some good ideas, and you think it will strike up conversations why not there's there's lots of people that do well that are in their 20s that create content on you know politics and commentary about uh it's usually a, a combination of politics slash culture if you know what i mean yeah that's what i was trying to figure out because you know going into issues is easy but it's also about making them like viral viral topics or things that can go viral especially with how the youtube algorithm is yeah, so you want to broadcast on all the platforms, right? Like you want to read, like you want to redistribute. So to sort of break it down and, and kind of like pull the curtain back so you guys can see stuff behind the scenes. I know that Matt's taken my course and he probably knows much of this, but this will just be a recap and inform some of you guys watching. But all I do is I press go live on StreamYard. I'm now broadcasting. I'm now doing a podcast. Uh, I do it for 90 minutes. I take call-ins. Um, I talk about a specific topic. It's on a schedule, it's once a week. My editor then makes clips off the video. My editor then also takes the audio podcast, rips it and uploads it to all the audio platforms. So usually by Tuesday, Wednesday, you can you can now listen to this. Um, then you can make shorts and you can distribute your content onto TikTok and Instagram and Twitter if you want. And then that all drives traffic back to your source. Now, if you wanna get reach, like if you want people to pay attention to what you're saying, you have to talk about things that matter, right? Like you have to, like you have to be, you don't want to fly so close to the sun that, you know, you run into a problem like Andrew did, like Andrew Tate did, obviously, but you don't want to be so quiet that you're not significant, right? So you kind of have to like figure a line that you can walk that allows the algorithms to amplify you, but not so much that you run into the kinds of problems like Andrew did, right? Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a fine line. It's a it's a very fine line, right? All right. Yeah, uh, I might. I was thinking about booking a call with you. I'll probably still do that, but I just figured I'd ask while I saw your show running. Well, look, if you're in the School of Entrepreneurship, you're on the Facebook page, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just hop in on the next Zoom call and then just ask me then and we can chop it up then with the rest of the guys. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. All right, man. Thanks, brother. All right. Um, Let's go back here to the live chat. There's a super chat here. I got to grab. Uh, dung, dung is fun. The best investment is land or property. You cannot create more property or land. Time is your best friend. Piece of land could be worth a lot. Uh, property values go up and down though. Right. I mean, like not like, like there's no certainties. George, George Gammon says this, you know, whenever I talk to him and I have him on a, a podcast, he's like, you know, there's, there's, there's just probabilities, right? The probability is that land or property will go up in value provided that population continues to grow because they don't make any more land. So what are you going to do? You're going to send people out to space, be on Mars or whatever. Maybe that will, you know, change things in. But as it stands today, it's a reasonable argument. The problem, like, like the thing that I don't like about having land, and maybe this is a sigma part of me, you know, I suppose, is that you're you're anchored to a specific area. You're paying property taxes on it. You've got all these zoning bylaws and bullshit that they that they just bother you with all the time. There's 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 other assets that you can just kind of put in your pocket and just you know, I mean, like a this obviously isn't a ledger, but a like you can put a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin on something this size, just put it, put it in your pocket and go, right? And you've got your assets with you. So digital assets are, 
are pretty cool too. So there's lots of things that you can consider and look at. But land and property is definitely one of them. Um, the Wahlberger Report wants to talk about mental point of origin. Hey, Rich. How are you? Good. How you doing, man? Good, good. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about, first of all, something that you, you said a, a while back, which is now sticking in my head. When someone your, says, your, feel your like audio is a little bit messy on my end. I can barely hear you. Do you have a, do you have a mic on or can you switch over to another mic? How's that? That's a little bit better. It's working better. Okay. So something that you uh, mentioned formally is uh, it'll ruin your day to hear. I feel like, I feel like that you hear that all the time. And uh, I hear that, I hear it everywhere. And something else I'd like to add to that is for me. So people always say for me, this and that, for me, this, for me, that. I hear that mm -hmm. from women all the time. So it's so solipsistic mm -hmm. talking about for me, this is how the world is. And they go yeah. on. Um, it's quite something. So that's dug into my brain now, as well as the, I feel like so. But yeah, with, so let's uh, just talk about that. I feel. I feel thing for a moment because there's some people watching that have never heard that before. So you guys will start to notice this and I have to apologize in advance because once you hear this, you're always going to hear it everywhere as our friend is just, you know, describing right now. But when women start conversations, they always start with something like, I feel like, like, I feel like Becky just did it this way. Everything would be better. You know, that's just the way it has to be. You'll start to notice that guys now, use I feel like when they open a lot of sentences and, and start conversations. Whereas the thinking man, like if somebody were to say blah, 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 this and that, you know, this, that and the other thing, I'd be like, well, you know, I think that this would be the better way to do it. This is the way that I've always said it. And when you start to hear this, you can be like, holy shit, over there, over there, over there. And it, it's just a different way of speaking. It's not way that it's not a way that I like to communicate. It's not the way that I like to hear people sort of talk to me because I don't really care what your feelings are. Okay. Maybe that matters to you. Maybe, you know, for me, you know, like a friend is just saying here, maybe like, you know, for me, I feel like that if Becky just said it this way, it would be better. Right. And then you got Bob over there. He's like, yeah, well, I feel like that too, sort of thing. But you're going to hear it all, everywhere now. So that's what he's talking about when he brought that up because I was, because I was doing this in another podcast. But anyway, go ahead. Absolutely. For me, for me. And I think something yeah. that drags, a lot of that is mental point, point of origin as well as holding right. friends. Um, I went through a particularly tough time over COVID there, Rich. I got to say thank you for all of your content for helping out. Uh, I uh, I was a very outgoing person, very active in athletics, a leader, so on and so forth. And I joined up with a, a single mom, thought I could really mm. basketball coach the kids to success. And the fact of the matter is that that just didn't work. Uh, I might think that coaching basketball, coaching aspects work, but a lot of people don't even give a shit about <laughs> basketball coaching and those mm -hmm. kids. So, but uh, in the end, what ended up happening is that we did actually have a child together. I had step uh, stepchildren from, she had children from a previous marriage. Um, it did go South very fast. Once COVID went into play, um, mm -hmm. which was extremely tough which uh, had me growing a strong beard, holding some excellent frame, really digging down into making sure that I defined uh, what I was doing and making sure that I, I uh, chased excellence and not women. And mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that um, as a seasoned gentleman, I've been chased by many younger women now um, because I've been holding that frame and showing that this is an interesting life and a fun life that I'm, I'm having. And enjoying mm -hmm. and man i'm there's a particular instance i went on a business trip one young lady was searching me out invited me up to her hotel room and so forth and i fought it as much as i, I said i'm not going to get me too on this so mm -hmm. so i absolutely fought it as much as i could and then when we get back uh to our to to calgary which is where i'm from then she sought me out and said listen i'm trying to hunt you down here what is going on and so then ever since uh there's been uh, I've been holding frame and then this particular one has been a, an extreme compliment to what I'm doing because she sees my life as interesting and wants to be part of that 
and is willing to join at whatever ways that she can do so. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, over Christmas, she really likes the fact that I'm seasoned. I've got a legacy. My grandmother made shredded apple pies for Christmas, and she thought that that was great. Well, um, what did she do? I told her no gifts. I said, we're not giving each other gifts for Christmas, right? I'll take you out for dinner or something like that. What did she do? She went and baked a shredded apple pie and brought it over to the house because mm -hmm. she knew that was uh, important to me. So that was someone who, who kind of got it. I think that the deadly combination these days is a, um, is a generation X, which is myself and a mid twenties woman who is compliant and open to hearing to ideas. Because as you know, Rich, um, we're hardworking, we're disciplined. We've got ideas that are kind of going uh, aside in many ways, but mm -hmm. when you have who's in those mid twenties, who's got a lot of energy is open to, to taking up those ideas, boy, they really see the success of that compared to others who are living a different mm -hmm. way. They can just blast right ahead of everyone. So they, it, what do you do for a living? Uh, I've got my own business. Uh, mm. It's called this one. I uh, automate business operations. So taking anything mm. that's done on paper and turn it into an application. So cool. for example, um, home builders we do home inspections instead of doing it on paper we do it on mm. tablet and so the guys in the field fill it up in the tablet and then uh, the analytics go straight to management so it gets rid of any of the middle uh, middle ground let me just stop you there so the reason why i asked him that question guys is because you know he's talking about mental point of origin holding frame you notice the way that he communicates you notice the way that the ideas flow you notice the way that he's talking like he's speaking as an authority right um, and this is a guy that came from a single mother relationship. I think you said you were either living with her or married to her. I was, we were together for over a decade. Um, yeah. she had six children from a previous marriage. Really. I thought yeah. I could. Did you, did you go through the beta-tization process with her? hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and, and how long did it take you to unfuck all of that? Oh, it's, uh, you know, it, it, there's still some, um, fucking, that I'm dealing with in the regards that we've got a child together. But the fact of the matter is that stoicism absolutely mm -hmm. gates any of that nonsense. You have to remain stoic and that will negate the issues, even with, with her. Now, the fact of the matter is that I got to admit that I bought into some of that betatization, the, the mm -hmm. feminist, I'd say probably in the last six, seven years, pre COVID was very strong. And I, I tried to empathize with that. And that empathy really opened up a door to uh, limiting my masculine frame. And, uh, you know, that was a bad move on my part, a bad move. So I definitely was this baited. Is, yeah. yeah. So I, so I just wanted to shut up and let him talk. Cause normally I, I usually be like five, five, 10 minutes per, per person, but I want to let him sort of talk. So you get an idea of, uh, of what this is, uh, what this whole mental point of origin is and, and how he's pivoted from the beta process to where he is today. So, um, I don't normally do this or recommend this to people that call in, but you should join my community. You would be a good fit. Somebody in the comments was saying that you could connect with uh, Bentley, who's also in, in Alberta. Um, I can't remember where he lives in which city, but somebody in the chat put it in there. If you know Chris, put it in there. Um, but the link for my community, it's on the website, dude. Like you should get in. It, it's a it's a great tribe, and you'd fit in well. Yeah, I appreciate that. Love to do that, and and to to help out in whatever I can. I'm telling you that it Red definitely. Dude proves true it's a tough thing to do and to and uh, and in the court system rich because i'm dealing with the court situation in regards to custody with my son and i'll mm -hmm. tell you maintain frame has really yep. shown some benefits in that juncture and it, it it's proves not just for picking up girls no no it's absolutely compelling when, when you're going yeah. through media and, and speaking in front of judges and such it works, but you have to really make maintain your frame and remain stoic. It's tough to do because mm -hmm. they really push the buttons to get you off uh, off point. All right, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Really appreciate you. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Hope to see you on the inside. Um, let's get this super chat. And I got a guy here. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to Ryan next. Liam says, hey, Rich, uh, what do you think is the shortest amount of time you would commit to starting a new business? I am permanently immigrating to the States in 18 months and wonder if it isn't enough time. Um, okay, well, Liam, um, 
I'm going to say it again, get on my email list and get the School of Entrepreneurship course when it opens up for enrollment. 18 months doing this in the States, is it enough time to do it? If you're planning on starting a hard, annoying, and frustrating business, uh, probably not enough time. You're going to be frustrated anyway. But the kind of businesses that I tell people to run, the sorts of structures that I tell them to put in place, it doesn't matter if it's eight or 28 months. It doesn't matter if you're in New Zealand or if you're in the States. The kinds of businesses that I show you to set up, you can do anywhere at any time. And you and you don't need to worry about, oh, you know, do I have enough time in the States to do this? It should be, pro tip, it should be something you can move with you anywhere, right? Because God forbid there's another scamdemic and they lock you down and you can't leave. There's a lot of people that had mobile businesses that had a location independent type of business where they say, yeah, you know what? I don't like it here. I'm out. Screw them. I'm, I'm just going to leave. That's it. And then they would just go set up somewhere else where it's nice and sunny and they don't have to make you wear a, a face mask sort of thing. Um, RL says, less of a king, more of an ace. A sigma is just another type of alpha, not necessarily uh, nuance in most cases. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Yeah, it, it's it's just a guy that doesn't have a gang, basically, is what it is. Uh, you know, he's quieter, more of an introvert. Um, what did Ryan have for me here? Sigma male concept. Okay, Ryan, what's up, buddy? How you been, brother? Good, man. How are you? Eh, not too bad. I've called the show before. Um, I want to chime in on the Sigma male concept. Does it kind mm -hmm. of seem like, in a way, that's just people looking for shortcuts? A lot of people will criticize the Sigma male, you know, sort of thing and say, ah, you're just a, you know, you're just a guy with this, that, that's coping. You're, you're a nerd. You don't have any friends or, or something like that. Like, that's what I've heard. Well, it kind of seems like in a way, like whenever I've seen some of those concepts from earlier, that's just more of people just looking, looking for shortcuts. And, you know, one thing I've learned from you is you have to do the work. There's no shortcuts. And, Exactly. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, you have to do the work and it's just the way it is, though. You have to have a game plan, ride the course, and then you'll have your results. And just seem like with the Sigma male concept that people just want the shortcut route or, you know, the quick fix. Well, well, like I said earlier, go watch the Glenn Villeneuve um, interview with Joe Rogan or watch the series on Netflix and ask yourself, do you want to be that guy? Because that's that's what I would say is a Sigma male is a guy like that. Right. Yeah, that would make sense. Some people might like that. I mean, every once in a while, you know, there's times where I want to like to do stuff by myself. But yeah, you can't just do everything by yourself, man. It's impossible. Well, you're not going to, you know, like I said, you're not going to leave ripples, you know, out there. Like you're not going to put a little dent in the universe if you're going to disconnect from it. Exactly. It's yeah. Just the reality of it. Yeah. Um, I was also going to ask on a side note, too. I've seen, too, you were also planning on taking a fight soon. Uh, did you figure out uh, what you'll be fighting in and when that will be? Boxing. And um, it's not going to be a public bout. I'll probably mention it to my boys in uh, Toronto that are part of my uh, gang here, you know, if you will. I'll let them know where it's at and they can come. I might film it. But, uh, yeah, we're looking for an opponent right now. And um, why – like, my theory is what's the point in – uh, learning the skill if you don't test it. Well, right? yeah, I agree. And, I mean, I've I fought in MMA bo yeah, and boxing before. Yeah, and sparring is one way to test it, but it's not the same when you got like a two-minute round, a bell, you're in a ring, there's everybody in the audience sort of thing. Like, I want to test it. You know what I mean? It's oh, like yeah, when that... you go buy a fast car. Like, what's the point in buying the fast car if you don't test yourself, right? You want to run it down the quarter mile. You want to race it up against your buddy, right? Like, you got to test yourself. It's part of being a man. Well, yeah, like usually like the few hours before your fight, you'll get real nervous. Like it'll feel like the slowest hours. But once you step through those ropes, I mean, you've, you know, you'll just be there and you'll do your job. But always the anticipation. Yeah. It just feels like it's forever, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Why not? Yeah, I man, I'm looking forward to you winning, too. I mean, you got this. Thanks. I'll see you, Ryan. All right, All right brother. Appreciate it. All right. See ya. All right. Uh, let's get a couple more of these over here. You know, our super chat. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that um private chat let's see what we got here i started a little bit earlier today so i might go a little bit longer i'm kind of toying with starting these shows around 7 30 eastern um so let's see I, I might go for an extra 10 15 minutes longer uh paul paul where's paul he has an experience he wanted to share is chris oh chris has got a good one ltr wants to do plastic surgery against his wishes all right what is she what, doing, Chris? 
What's up, man? Finally, hey, good yo. to meet you. So I'm having the dilemma, right? So we all go through phases in our life. We spin plates. We have a couple of a couple of honeys on rotation, but we tend to gravitate towards one, whether or not they know it or not, right? The more we kind of get closer to a girl, the more she pushes away. So we kind of have to keep her at bay in order to for her to keep chasing our validation, right? Well, the crappy part is I've known this girl for just over about a month and a half, all right? And she's a Colombian woman. So just to give you a little background. Oh, they love and, plastic surgery. Dude, that's the thing. And the story goes, I met her as is, perfectly natural. She has a mm. couple of tattoos that I find kind of whatever. But you meet somebody as the first time you see them, you don't really think much of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she would go back and forth to Colombia often, you know, to see some family. But she says... Over the new year, I'm going down to Columbia. You're going to have to stay for three weeks. I say, well, what the hell for? Mm. She tells me, and she tells me basically while she's drunk, you know, at a New Year's party with her family down in Miami that she's going to have her tits done. Mm. So I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, at least let me enjoy them for a few months time, you know, before you go up and get them chopped up. Okay. So I'm thinking this girl, you know, I hold frame as a gentleman before you tell was talking about the girl is great about 80% of the time. You know, we're, you're not going to get a hundred percent out of a woman, right? If you can get 75 to 80% of her being on your term, I find mm -hmm. that a win, right? Especially for yeah. a potential LTR. How so I'm 32. Okay. Well, I like and what you're she, saying. thank you, sir. And she's 29 and she's a cool chick, right? But mm -hmm. I don't normally get too invested in women. Cause like I said, the more investment you show, the more they pull away. So you kind of mm -hmm. have to play that game, right? Yeah. So she goes down to Columbia this past, last week, and I believe we had spent the weekend together in Savannah, Georgia. I'm in Northeast Florida. Everything was great. And I'm thinking, you know, the entire time I can kind of, I didn't make it a mission to coerce her out of it, but she kept bringing mm -hmm. it up to me about mm -hmm. how she's going, going. And I said, every time we, you know, having fun together, I'm like, you don't need to cut any of this. This is perfect. But mm -hmm. not to the point where it was iffy. You know, you say your point, you leave it alone. Well, needless to say, she went ahead and did it this mm -hmm. last week and Thursday. I didn't hear from her. She left Monday. I, I gave her about two days, you know, alone time. And then Thursday, I hit her up just to be, you know, courteous. I said, I think your sur you told me your surgery is today. Hope everything mm -hmm. goes to plan. Hopefully you're happy, but more importantly, healthy. Let me know when you recover. Hit me up when mm -hmm. you recover. So she hits me up about, you know, nine, ten hours later, basically telling me how she's in the hospital still. She's spending the night going home thank you so much for your wishes blah 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 mm -hmm. i can't get over this shit man i'm like supremely fucking annoyed because i like what, what i like you? i like what i like and i am into more natural but mm -hmm. it's more so what what i find that tends to piss me off is that the timing sucks because it's only been a month so you know my body my choice they can do whatever the hell they want you don't have yeah, that she's not your girlfriend kind of... she's a girl that you're dating exactly so I understand that it's a good time mm -hmm. frame basically for them to say, well, fuck it. I'm going to do what I want. And she said that, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it kind of frustrates me because in the past, whether I've known a girl for a year, you know, her, and I wasn't as strong as I was now in terms of dealing with women, of course, as we age, we get better, but whether it's a year or two weeks or two months, it's kind of like, I get pissed off that they don't take my, my opinion. They don't value my opinion in terms of what I would like from them in terms of mm. something that's more of a well, self-conscious like decision. Well, Chris, let's be honest. I mean, you, you know, you've known her for a month. If it was exactly a year, five years, and she was going against your wishes, then I would say, okay, we have a conversation that we kind of need to have sort of thing on that. Of course. But women today, they don't typically follow the guidance that men set. They don't like when men set boundaries for them, healthy boundaries like, you know, don't hang out with men sort of they thing. They don't like, like what their parents tell them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're not going to like hearing it from a guy because they've been told for, you know, their entire lifetime, you don't need no man, you know, Correct. men and women are equal, blah, blah, blah. Sort of stuff. Did did she have a small cup? Was it an A cup or something? Or like what, nah, like man, what was the starting she was, point? She was virgin on, on Ds, on a, a simple D. Like they were perfect. She complained that she wants a lift, right? But you mm. know what that means when you go down to South America. Their ideology of what's beautiful is not what a doctor in Miami or Beverly Hills is going to do. He ain't going to make them look natural 
and and nice is going to make them look like fucking bolt-ons because she showed me the Instagram of the doctor. My God, man, everyone looked like a copy-paste fucking Barbie doll. <laughs> and the thing is, she's not the most fit to where she doesn't have a flat-toned stomach, right? She's got a little fluffy belly, which is beautiful to me. But you go put on bolt-ons, then nothing else matches. Just wait for more surgery. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, okay. And, and that's, you see... The fact that I'm calling in to discuss this with you is almost like pissing me off. The fact that I have to get it off my chest, right? Because okay. normally I would let them, you know, do whatever the fuck you want. But of course, as a man deep down, you're like, this is good LTR material, but shit me. Well, it's look, only been a month. I, mean, I can't do anything about it. And look, what if good, I don't like it when I see him? Good, That's the problem. Good LTR. Um, brother, I'm hearing <laughs> you. And yeah. I, listen, I'm good with either. Okay. Like I don't, I don't discriminate. As am I if I met her that way. That's I'd great. love them. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So. Talk to me. Look, I mean, <laughs> as far as LTR material, like if you're, if you're spinning plates and you're dating this gal and you got a few other things on the go and, you know, you've, you've expressed that it's not your preference and she goes and does it anyway. Yeah. Then, you know, it's just like, you know, okay, it you know like I dig your vibe. Like, you know, we'll see how this, oh, look, oh, Becky's over here. Let's talk to her tonight. Yeah. sort of thing. You okay. know what it is. Yeah so like that's just the way that you have to handle it right like you Correct. have to like you don't I hate want the fact to that I have to yeah but that's that that's a game that you kind of have to play today unfortunately yeah. right i mean yeah. you've already expressed you know what your preference was you already expressed that you liked her the way that she was she wasn't happy with herself she did it anyway yes, check sir. it out when she gets back you know see you, see if you dig her vibe still you know see if you like the new bolt-ons you know as you call them you know the tailor yeah. maids we used if, to call them tailor made <laughs> Yeah, if I don't, just just give me your opinion. If the scarring is too much, because a lot of it is attraction, we know that. It's all yeah, the you know, scarring 80%. can be a problem. Yeah, what, the scarring what do you, can be a problem. But but I mean they have ways it? of getting well, they have they have ways of getting them in there without much scarring now. So I don't have faith in them, brother. That's what I'm saying. If it turns out Look, to be a shoddy job, what do you do? What do you tell I, her? I mean, I would just be like, okay, well, Becky's over here, so I gotta go now. <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, like I've seen like nice jobs and Correct. No I have as well. so, you know, so keep your fingers crossed and maybe it's a nice job and everything's fine. And you know, that's, that's probably maybe the only thing that she ever protests you on and everything else is going to be great in the coming months or years or whatever. But just, you know, just don't take it too seriously. You've only known her for a month. Keep doing what Correct. you're doing. Wait, wait for her to come to you and be like, hey, Chris, I really dig your vibe. Where do we stand? You know, what's going on? Can I claim well, you? She told me. Deal with that later on yeah. down the road. Correct. She um, she has been kind of silent. I haven't heard from her for the past three to four days. I'm just leaving it open, leaving it alone, considering it she's in recovery mode. It's pretty painful for women. Yeah, apparently. yeah, yeah. And I know she is. She's a good girl. But I'm just leaving it alone. I already sent one message. I'm not going to continue to approach let her come mm. to me when she's ready. Cool. Yeah. I just hate the fact that if I see her again and I'm going to be less attracted to her physically, God damn it. I don't want to be in that position because she's a cool chick, but That's I know okay. it's only There's been a month. Women out there. True that, my friend. Love the school of entrepreneurship, sir. I signed up last whenever you opened it last. Oh, Good you're shit. in. Yes, Thank sir. You. I go, I go over it um, in the evening times when I have time. I am a physician, chiropractic physician. So Absolutely. I don't know if that's entrepreneur or not. You know, I have my own office that I opened up the past April, but I'm just trying to get my ideas well, flowing. To what else I can do? Well, well, here's some inspiration for you. One of the YouTube channels that I watch is Dr. Eric Berg, and yeah. he is a chiropractic physician by training, but that's not what he does right now. Now he's running an elf business that is massively amplified. I'll look him up. Eric yeah. Berg? Dr. Eric Berg, yeah. He's actually got really good uh, dense videos or five, six minutes long on useful topics that you want information on and they offer solutions. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's my take on it. Um, yeah, well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the course and I'll see you on one of the Zoom calls, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, let us know how uh, how, how the uh, Taylor Maids work out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, sir. Much love to you. I hope to talk with you again soon. God bless you. Thanks, Chris. See you. Cheers, man. Um, yeah. And again, guys, if you're not on my email list, um, I'm going to change the ticker back over here, entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags. You can get on the uh, email list. You'll get notified when the school of entrepreneurship opens for enrollment. Uh, you've had a couple people hop on tonight and just mentioned that they've got a ton of value out of it. So there you go. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh, we got Paul with an experience to share. What are we at? 
I'll probably make this the last one. I know I know there's a lot of you guys waiting to chime in, but here we go. Paul, how you doing, buddy? You got an experience to share? Hey, Rich, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you talked a lot today about the importance of networking. Topic, yeah. um, to put it in simplest terms, I'd like to talk about um, how guys can avoid networks that are actually detrimental to them. And oh, just to sum up my experience, um, several years ago, um, I got involved with a church men's group. Um mm -hmm. Anybody who's read Rolo's book on religion is probably going to know better. But mm -hmm. um, that was an example where I thought I had this, you know, fraternity, this network of men. Um, but when my life really kind of took a turn, I was dealing with the divorce and a child custody battle. This um, network that I thought I had, one, only supplied me with um, blue pilled conditioning and training and two, pretty much um abandoned me when I needed a network the most. So, I mean, mm. my question is, are there other examples you can think of, of types of groups that men might be drawn to when they shouldn't be? And are there any red flags that guys should look out for when they are vetting a particular network? Um, well, I mean, most people watching aren't going to like me when I say this, but the free groups normally suck. So any sort of tribe or group, or even a Facebook group, anything that's like, hey, you know, join my epic league of men sort of group um, and they're free, they usually suck. They usually suck if they're run by, I mean, you want to take a look at the organizer and judge him. Like, I hate to say it, but just judge him and be like, you know, would I want to trade lives with this guy? Would I want to have dinner with him? Would I want to invite him over to my family's house? um and have him interact with my kids my wife my girlfriend my whatever you know like is this the kind of person that um i would be proud to represent you know sort of thing um i think that there's a lot of these like this was a church masculinity group was it paul well that's how they advertised it but it, you know yeah. like rollo's talked about in his book it's more of a blue pill it's, beta factory it's well, it's mostly build a better beta. So most of the guys that get into them are mostly beta males and they try to build better betas, but they don't usually try to build better betas for the men. They, they usually try to build better betas for the women. So more compliant, more agreeable, more like, let's do more chore play around the house to get more nookie, you know, for cookie sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I would look for groups that, that do cool things that you're interested in. Um, the more money you know that you spend, the better experience you're, you know, that you're going to have with a group for sure. Um, and go, go broader because I mean, if you're watching my content, if you've read my book, if you've, you know, paid attention to my podcast sort of stuff, then you know that my network is global, right? Like I just don't deal with Toronto. Like I have guys all around the world. I have, I have, I have a, I have a business group that I do a monthly call with. It's usually about a three to five hour call and they're guys in my community. And I got a guy, got two guys in the States, a guy in Sweden, a guy in Romania, a guy in Australia. Um, sorry, uh, there's four guys in the States and then the rest around the world. So these things don't have to be down the road at your local church, right? Like you can find a good tribe of people that are, a little bit further out the only problem with that though is yeah and i've got a solid <laughs> i got a solid fan base down in mexico too um sorry putting that up um i ran into a lot of people when i was in mexico that just recognized me which is bizarre because i got it more down there than what i got it here in canada so you know like these things spread you know what i mean like you'll like you'll find the tribe of people that you need if you go out looking for it and you invest in it too so where do you want to start? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what's the goal here, my friend? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not even really speaking for myself personally here. Um, I think I've found uh, a tribe that's. Um, oh, great. I guess you say just, yeah, it's it's more so within my workplace. Um, okay. You know, a lot of like minded, you know, we're not entrepreneurs, but we kind of have that um, those tendencies, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm really looking out for guys that might be finding themselves in situations like I was in back then. Yeah. Uh, like I would just keep it simple and say, stay, stay away from free groups because you're going to get what you pay for, which is going to be shit. And anything that's like build a better beta stuff, 
um, you know, stay away from that. Yeah. Look, I mean, if you're looking for a tribe that that is more aligned with my sort of work and my sort of teachings, the starting point for guys is the 10 percent group, which, you know, I'll put the banner up for that so you guys can. It'll be in the description below when you guys um, watch the replay, but it's entrepreneursofcars.com forward slash community. There's a starting group. It's a thousand bucks for uh, for a lifetime membership, actually. Um, and that's where you start. You know, you network with the guys. We've got uh, guys like Jaron. We've got guys like uh, Moff. We've got uh, t like Josh. We've got uh, Bentley. We've got probably at least another one other guy that's going to join as an admin, you know, before the end of the year, but there's like 80, 85 members, you know, from around North America, these guys do some cool shit, man. And they, and they have these long ass zoom calls. I don't manage them, but it's the starting point where they kind of like get their feet wet and start to be held accountable for things that they're doing. And then they can move up into my community. Um, they got a full credit for whatever they paid, you know, the starting point and to my group and the shit just gets bigger and better from there. So it's like, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? I mean, if you just want to play, uh, a co-ed sports league. Cool. I could recommend a place for that. The Toronto sport and social club is great for that. I used to play in it. Right. Um, if that's the kind of tribe that you're looking for, but if you're looking for a group of men, like a, a gang, you know, like the Jack Donovan sort of way that it's described, that's what I would be looking at. Cool. Yeah. Good feedback. Thank you, Rich. All right, Paul. Thanks buddy. All right. Um, let me go to the live chat real quick. Hour and 35. Yeah, um, they're going down to the uh, Miami Boat Show. So the starting point, the ten percent group, and Jaron, Jaron will be down at it. He's you know he's in Mexico, uh, but they're going to the uh, boat show. One of the guys uh, works at the boat show and has an in. So there's a handful of guys that are connecting down there and doing that. That's like that's the kind of shit that you want to do if you want to you know hang around with cool people and do cool stuff. Like boats are awesome. They're great for that. Um, the problem is, is too many people bump up against like a glass ceiling. It's like, oh, I, I'm not worried of that. Or no, no, I can't get to that. Or it's impossible. There's only so much money. It's like, no, think bigger. You're thinking anyway, think bigger, right? Like instead of thinking, I want to get a, you know, a 9.9 .9 horsepower, 10 foot, you know, uh, tin, you know, like tin can boat, go for the 21 foot bow rider, go for the 40 footer, go, go for whatever the next thing happens to be, go for the next goal, you know, talk about it with men and put your strategies together. Like wh what is it? Is it a money problem? You know, what is it that's holding you back? Talk about those things, have those conversations, hold each other accountable. You're not going to do that in a woods and I'll, you know, in a cabin in the woods in Alaska, but that might be for you, right? You might be the Glenn Villeneuve, you know, dude that wants to do that is what it is. Um, do, do, do. Yeah. DL Saint says I was at the boat show last year. Great networking. I'm telling you guys, if, if you have a, I mean, even if you don't have a boat, if you don't have a supercar, if you don't have a plane, I mean, if you like aircraft, go to air shows. If you like boats, go to boat shows. If you like supercars, go to Cars of Coffees and start there, even if you don't have something, right? Just start, begin. That's, that's it. Um, all right. I'm going to wrap it up on that note, guys. Uh, I've got a live show. I'm probably going to do Thursday this week. I'm kind of hashing out the details on the Entrepreneurs of Cars channel. Uh, but I'll be going live on the Plane to Win podcast. So make sure you know, you're know you subscribed for that. Um, what else? Any other announcements? I think that's it. We're probably going to be doing a general show on Saturday. So we'll chop it up with uh, you know some of the boys from uh, that crew. But I'll all right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show. Peace.